Kia ora kato, no mai hari mai, and welcome to today's session. So we're going through a series. It's a virtual regional um, series for New Zealand. And we've got a lot of the um, economic development agencies and the likes that are um, presenting to you throughout the series. And today we're going to be hearing from Tawaka. And Tawaka is based in Hamilton. And Rosie and the team are going to take you through uh, their presentation today. But what you will hope to learn from today's session is, you know, the general demographics and statistics of the region. What sectors the region sees as opportunities and have resources to build on? You'll hear about case studies, perhaps, or projects that are current in the region. And you're also going to have a couple of special guests here today from, uh, you've got the creative and tourism. So it's going to be a really fascinating session. So um, I'm looking forward to it. So I hope you all are too. So over to you, Rosie. Wonderful. Thank you, Michelle. Just let me know once that screen sharing is working for you all. Is that on screen? Wonderful. Inga mana, inga reo, inga iwi, e rauranga te rama, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Hello and a very warm welcome to you all from the Waikato region. I'm Rosie Sprague, the Industry and Sector Development Manager for Te Waka, the Waikato region's Economic Development Agency. It is our absolute pleasure to be hosting this session today and to introduce you to the Waikato region and hopefully tempt some of you to consider choosing the Waikato region as you make your plans to come to Aotearoa New Zealand or for those of you that may already be in the country uh, to consider visiting or locating yourselves here in the future. Today you will be hearing from a range of speakers from the Waikato region. I'll be kicking us off um, with a general overview of the region um, and then we'll be hearing from Amber Doughty from Hamilton and Waikato Tourism and then Jeremy Mayo from Creative Waikato who will be sharing more about life in the Waikato and all the great things that you can do here. We'll also be hearing, um, hopefully she can join later on, from Cheryl Reynolds, um, one of the EHF fellows who will be talking about her experience of living and working in the Waikato region. And I'll then close us off and open up for any questions from those of you who are here in person today. So before I kick off in my sales pitch of the Waikato region, I just wanted to briefly introduce you to Te Waka, um, the Economic Development Agency for the Waikato. So we exist to lift the economic performance across the Waikato region and ultimately to improve the well-being of our people and communities. We do this through data and insights, advocacy, connection and facilitation. We provide inspiration to inform decision making. We advocate for our region and we take a stand on issues that matter and we celebrate what makes our region great. We're well connected and we bring people and opportunities together. And we partner with others to facilitate projects and initiatives that benefit um, the Waikato economy. And through all this, we hope to help people make smarter decisions that benefit our region attract smart investment to the region, attract and build and retain great talent in the region, and attract and, and grow great businesses in the Waikato. So that's a very quick introduction to Te Waka. Um, now it's time to learn about the Waikato region, starting with a video that tells you our region's story. The river of time flows strongly through a place of new opportunities and powerful possibilities. From the arrival of the first waka, bold thinkers have seen the potential in this lush land and prime location. Where land and sea provide and nature's kaleidoscope inspires our care of people and place. This is a place to dive in, to discover, to explore. Where mahi a te mahi, getting the job done, is in our DNA. Working together, working smarter, and giving it everything we've got. 
This is a place that grows and celebrates success by backing those who actively shape the world. Working in harmony with the land and harnessing the power of the earth with ingenuity and teamwork. Making, creating, and growing to share here at home and with the world. A place where food for thought is abundant, where minds can be nourished and grown. A place where life is good, whether you've been here a while or just starting out. And where friendships are grown with open hearts in open places. This is our Turanga Waiwai, the place where we stand, in our vibrant towns and a smart, growing city. A powerful incubator for new thinking, high performance, and a genuinely rewarding lifestyle. This is our place. This is your place. The beating heart of New Zealand. Our home. The mighty Waikato. E mihi ana ki nga tohu honehe o nga iwi o Waikato e noho nei mātou. Tēnā koutou. We start our tour of the region by acknowledging the many iwi and hapu, the Māori tribal groups that uh, sit right across our region, including Waikato Tainui to the north, Hauraki to the east, um, Maniapoto, Raukawa and Tūwhare Tua to the south. The Waikato region is rich in Māori history and is the home of Kingitanga, the Māori King movement. Tangata Whenua hold a very significant physical and cultural relationship with the Waikato region, and we acknowledge Tangata Whenua as kaitiaki or guardians within the Waikato region. From the Bombay Hills in Port Waikato in the north, down to the Kaimai Ranges and Mount Ruapehu in the south, and from Moko on the west coast across to the Coromandel Peninsula in the east, the Waikato region is very large and mighty, with 10% of Aotearoa's New Zealand's population, the longest river and largest lake in the country, and the country's most important geothermal systems. The Waikato is at the centre of a three-region area where half of New Zealanders live, and two-thirds of recent population growth has occurred. Population, employment and business growth in the Waikato region is strong and well ahead of the New Zealand average. We're at the heart of the Golden Triangle, that economic zone encompassing Auckland, Hamilton and Tauranga, and that generates over half of Aotearoa New Zealand's GDP. Our population is also young and diverse. Over a quarter of the population in the Waikato is of Māori descent, and one in five in our region were born overseas. Our region is made up of 10 districts, a large area, um, and each of those districts have their own uh, unique strengths and significant industries and innovative local businesses. So to help take us through the region, we've, we've grouped these districts into four zones um, and we'll take you on a quick tour of the region to learn about the key sectors and industries in each of those parts of, of the Waikato. So we'll start in the, in the northeast um, with uh, Thames Coromandel, Hauraki and the Matamata Piako districts. So Thames Coromandel to the northeast is renowned for its natural beauty, rural farmland, misty rainforests and pristine golden beaches. Hauraki, just south of Thames Coromandel, is home to many natural, cultural and historical landmarks, including New Zealand's largest gold mine. And Matamata Piako lies in the heart of the Waikato and is well known for its dairy farming, thoroughbred racing industry and is the home of Hobbiton. In addition to the beautiful white sand beaches, this part of the Waikato is known for tourism, mining, agriculture, aquaculture, um, and is the home of one of our leading um, innovators in the aquaculture space, AgriSea, which is New Zealand's largest investor in research for biological farm inputs and marine algae ecosystems. So around 20% of the Waikato's population and businesses are based in this eastern zone. 
Moving more centrally, the central zone is made up of the Waikato, Hamilton and Waipa districts, and this is where much of the region's growth has occurred and it's expected to continue growing very strongly into the future. So the Waikato district to the north is directly on the border with Auckland and it's home to significant environmental infrastructure and community resources and that's also the home of the Kingitanga, the Māori King movement. It's in my hometown, Narawahia, just down the road from where I am right now. Um, and the Waikato district is also home to the world famous surf breaks at Raglan on the west coast um, with its wild and beautiful black sand beaches. Hamilton in the centre is our largest city in the Waikato region with just under 180,000 residents. It's a well connected, welcoming and diverse place uh, that reflects our identity, it promotes creativity, innovation and entrepreneurship um, and celebrates our connection to the river which, which runs right through the city. Many of the Waikato's largest businesses are headquartered in Hamilton. And the Waipa district lies just south of Hamilton. I think about half the Te Waka team lives uh, in the Waipa district. Um, there's significant pastoral farming, thoroughbred horse studs and fruit production. Uh, the Waipa district includes very popular and growing uh, boutique settlements like Cambridge, the town of Trees and Champions, which is known for its leafy streets, heritage buildings, and it's the home of many of our national sport organizations and high performance sports centers, including cycling, triathlon, rowing, kayaking, and canoeing. So this central part of the Waikato region is really known for technology businesses, particularly in agri-tech, um, as well as agricultural and food production, manufacturing, and logistics. One of our largest and most successful agri-tech companies in the country, Gallagher Group, is headquartered in Hamilton City, and it's the country's top performing exporter of high-tech agricultural and security solutions. So in the central zone, you'll find about 60% of the Waikato's population and businesses. Then moving south into the southern zone, which has the South Waikato, Otorohanga and Waitomo districts. Um, the South Waikato district really showcases natural beauty, easygoing lifestyle, beautiful lakes, rolling green hills, forests, and uh, not a single traffic light. Uh, Otorohanga is, is proud to be the Kiwiana capital of New Zealand and it's home to the world famous Kiwi House and Native Bird Park. And Waitomo is of course known for the world famous Waitomo Caves, um, one of our most inspiring natural wonders. Uh, and the tourism team will be talking to you a bit more about that later on. This, I guess, southern zone of the Waikato region is obviously known for tourism, uh, but also for its large forestry and associated processing industries, uh, manufacturing, and of course, agriculture. It has really diverse productive farmland, extensive hill country, ocean beaches, native bush, river valleys, and protected harbors. And you'll find about 10% of the Waikato's population and businesses in this southern zone. And finally, we have the Taupo district right at the very south of our region. And it's of course named and most known for the sparkling Lake Taupo that lies right at the center of this district. It's our great inland sea of New Zealand. If you travel around Taupo, you'll find towering volcanoes in the Tongariro National Park and the thundering Hooker Falls. Taupo is a community with a really strong sense of belonging, shared commitment to nurturing and growing the district for future generations. The key industries you'll find down here include the energy, uh, tourism and dairy industries, um, and also includes Miraka, which is an indigenous Māori dairy company, which has one of the lowest dairy processing carbon footprints in the world. And again, around about 10% of the Waikato's population and businesses are based in the Taupo district. So with such a, a large and diverse region with lots of different sectors and different parts of our region, it can be hard for us to think about which sectors do we prioritize to drive our future growth. And so recently uh, we brought together a collective of regional leaders who've identified six key sectors um, that are, our, I guess, our key growth opportunities as a region, which I'll briefly talk through with you now. So first up, we have logistics and distribution. And this is a really key growth sector for the Waikato, really reflecting our position at the heart of that golden triangle with Auckland and Tauranga. There are really significant investment being made in distribution hubs like the Ruakura Inland Port that will really improve connections right across the Upper North Island. And once that investment is complete, it will represent 10% of New Zealand's total industrial space at that port. Um, as you've no doubt picked up from our regional tour, uh, agriculture and food production is, is really critical and key in the Waikato region. Our, our economy is really founded on food production and 60% of the total exports from our region um, is from the dairy industry or related to dairy. 
The opportunity though for our region is to really grow into those new future areas, functional foods, nutraceuticals, precision fermentation, aquaculture, those are real key growth opportunities for us, as well as looking at how do we improve the efficiency and the sustainability of how we use our land and the way that we produce food. Um, our region is also has a really strong manufacturing base and that really builds off our strength in primary production. Manufacturing is our second largest industry um, and it um, employs about 10% of our workforce. Our leading manufacturing industries um, include dairy and meat products, fabricated metal, wood, transport equipment and paper products. So a real variety of different types of manufacturing. The opportunity for our region is to really accelerate the transition to more advanced manufacturing practices, the, the adoption of Industry 4.0 and, and creation of new um, innovative manufacturing methods. Of course, we can't not talk about the tech sector. It's important to every region in the country. Um, it's, and it's one of the fastest growing industries in the Waikato region. It's a really critical source of innovation that enables us to be competitive and resilient into the future. Uh, we're in, in our particular strengths are, we lead in, in artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, and that's been supported by the Artificial Intelligence Institute Institute that's housed at the University of Waikato, which is also home to New Zealand's most powerful supercomputer that's dedicated to machine learning. And of course, agri-tech is a really important part of our local tech sector. So nearly 60% of all of New Zealand's agri-tech jobs are in the Waikato region. Um, and a really wide variety of types of agri-tech specializing in animal management, farm IT tools, food processing technology, genetics, herd improvement, systems manufacturing, lots of other types of products and services relating to um, agri-tech. And we also, of course, host the Field Days, which is the largest agri-tech trade event in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, and energy and sustainability is also a really key growth area for us. The Waikato region generates a lot of New Zealand's electricity supply, uh, primarily through hydroelectric dams that um, sit along the Waikato River. Uh, but we're also home to um, the country's largest thermal power station, which is a significant contributor to carbon emissions for the country and obviously for our region. So the opportunity is for us to accelerate investment in clean distributed renewable energy um, and green technology. So with having a thermal power plant in our region, it does make the Waikato region one of the highest emitting regions in New Zealand, uh, and also because of our reliance on the agriculture industry and the strength of the transportation industry in our region. I think that really creates a massive opportunity for change makers like the Edmund Hillary Fellows to support the Waikato region on our journey towards better sustainability and decarbonisation as a high emitting region. And last but not least, the tourism sector. Uh, like much of the country, our tourism sector was hit hard by New Zealand's COVID restrictions. And so obviously there's now an opportunity for us to really rebuild the sector. And, and we're looking to really focus on high value cultural um, event and adventure tourism. So hopefully that's given you a, a good quick flavor of the key industries in the Waikato region. I'll now talk a little bit about living in the Waikato before handing over to some of our um, guest speakers. So the Waikato region is, is really well located at the heart of the Upper North Island. So it's a great home base for exploring the North Island. Um, life here is anything but boring. You could be spending your weekends dining at vibrant award-winning eateries, soaking up the sun and relaxing at one of our local beaches on either the east or the west coast. You can choose between golden or black sands. Um, you can enjoy the outdoors, plenty of beautiful walks and, and activities to choose from. There are plenty of housing options, fantastic schooling and great career opportunities. It's a good move for families. So whether your dream is to be in a city or find a community in a small town or really escape to the country, there are lots of op options to build a great lifestyle in the Waikato. We've got excellent education options across all levels of learning from primary, intermediate, secondary through to tertiary. Um, including a world leading uh, university. Um, the University of Waikato is ranked 373rd in the world. There's 10 subjects that are in the top 200. And the Waikato Management School is part of an elite group of business schools that have earned triple crown status. We, uh, the university also has New Zealand's only dedicated cybersecurity lab and uh, the first master's degree in cybersecurity in New Zealand. And uh, just this year, the university also launched a Bachelor of Climate Change, which is the first degree of its kind in the world. 
The Waikato is also home to two of our largest national tertiary education providers, uh, Te Wānanga o Aotearoa, which is a uniquely Māori education provider, and Te Pukinga, which is the newly formed entity that's bringing together vocational education providers from right across Aotearoa, New Zealand. And WinTech, the Waikato Institute of Technology, is one of the first vocational training providers that's been integrated into Te Pukinga. So with the presence of such a wide range of top class education providers, the pool of young talent in the Waikato region is really strong and it's really valued by our local employers. There are plenty of opportunities also for our, our regional workforce to continually learn and develop their talent. And when it comes to research and innovation, so in addition to being home to a really diverse range of innovative businesses, we also have five out of the seven National Crown Research Institutions that have a presence in the Waikato region and they're listed here. We're also home to KiwiNet, which is a globally unique research commercialization organization. And it brings together 19 different research organizations from right across the country to virtually join forces and pull some of their funding so they can get the, the best out of their research discoveries and get them investor ready. So the region, the Waikato region is a great base to engage with a lot of our, a lot of New Zealand's research community and to tap into some of their new discoveries and innovative thinking. So that's more than enough from me for now. I'd now like to hand you over to Amber Doughty from Hamilton and Waikato Tourism, and she'll be talking a bit more about life and the wide range of, of fun things to do in the region. I'm just going to hand control over to Amber now. Amber, the floor should be yours. Are you on mute, Amber, by chance? Yes, Amber, you're on mute. Rosie, maybe if you take control back, so then maybe Amber can unmute herself. Okay, I'll stop that. Can you find your unmute, Amber? Yes, maybe sorry, I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give control back to you. Thank you. Sorry, my little, my little thing disappeared and then I couldn't unmute myself. <laughs> um, well, kia ora tātou. Um, ko prongia te maunga, ko waikato te awa, no kirikiri roa aho, ko Ambu toko ingoa. Um, kia ora everyone, I'm Amber from Hamilton Waikato Tourism. Um, if you couldn't tell from my pitiha, um, all of the locations I named are from the Waikato. So I'm born and bred here and um, Waikato is my home. So as Rosie mentioned, uh -oh, now my click is not working. <laughs> no. I'll just let that and I'll just start talking. Um, <laughs> so as Rosie mentioned, um, our area of the Waikato is slightly different to, um, oh, now my video is playing, as here we go, is slightly different to um, the area that Tawaka covers. So we do border Auckland um, and Hamilton as our main city, but we don't cover Coromandel and we don't cover Taupo. So our tourism remit is just a a smidgy different. Um, we're generally known for caves, waves and hobbit holes. So our rugged west coast of Raglan, um, the wonderful glowworms in Waitomo and our Middle Earth movie magic at Hobbiton and um, some other locations around the region as well. Uh, the longest river in New Zealand also passes through our region, um, starting in Taupo and exiting at Port Waikato in the north. Our city of Hamilton is New Zealand's fourth largest city. We are also the fourth highest domestic spend in New Zealand. So we have a really strong visitor market in New Zealand. Looking for my next slide. <laughs> Oh, 
it just seems to be a bit of a lag. Here we go. Um, I also apologize in advance, our office is based at the airport. So if you can hear a lovely plane arriving or departing out <laughs> just to my left, um, I apologize for that in advance. So in Waitomo, uh, the Ks are about 30 million years old. There is probably 300 known caves in Waitomo, so more than just the one Glowworm Cave experience that we probably have all seen before. Um, Waitomo is about an hour south of Hamilton um, and offers a range of soft adventure, abseiling, zip lining, jumping off waterfalls, throat, floating um, and inner tubes of tyres. Um, so there's a, a bit of something for everyone. You've probably seen the magical glowworm boat ride images um, wherever you are in the world. Um, it's sort of a bucket list item waiting again for my next slide here we go um so as you can see there's um wet tours dry tours something for everyone um and it doesn't matter what time of the year you go attend these type of activities the the temperature in the caves is the same pretty much all year round about 13 degrees um there are about five main operators in Waitomo um, that offer everything from large group tours to small boutique 12 person tours. Um, and then some really cool adventures like the um, Abso you see there which is about 100 meters into the belly of a cave. Um, tours range from a couple of hours to full day, if that's what you're after. <laughs> and then we move over to our next hero, which is Hobbiton movie set. Um, built as a permanent movie set in the region um, as an outcome of the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit trilogies. The set, the tours of the set pass through about 42 Hobbit holes. Um, they have different experiences. You can go on um, a second breakfast tour, which is the first tour of the day, um, which you're then treated to a second breakfast like a hobbit where you can eat all you'd like. There's also evening tours where you get a tour um, of the set at night with lanterns. Um, and then we move into Hamilton City, which is the hub for our region. We have a really um, eclectic restaurant cafe scene here. Um, you could almost eat your way around the world just in one city. We're also, um, as a city, um, embracing the river and turning back to, to face the river. In the past, we've sort of looked away from it. So as you can see, Victoria and the river there is sort of um, turning back to the river and making that part of our city again. Um, we also have a really vibrant art scene here, and I won't talk about that too much, as Jeremy will talk about that shortly. Um, but we're really excited to see our regional theatre um, due to open in 2024, which will be a great um, addition to the city's art scene. Um, Hamilton City is also, um, as I mentioned, the hub for the region, um, has great shopping and retail. Um, most of our accommodation is based here. So we like to think of it as that's your base for, the, for your stay in the Waikato, and then you move out to all the, the other regions. Um, Hamilton Gardens is another jewel in our crown. It's a collection of about 20 themed gardens that tell the story of different civilizations throughout time. So we like to um, think of it as a living museum um, rather than a collection of botanical gardens. So here we've got the Indian Chaba garden, the Surrealist garden, um, at the bottom two images where everything is about five times the size. Um, so it's made to make you feel like you're Alice in Wonderland. Um, and then the newest garden that's opened uh, just last month was the ancient Egyptian garden. Um, despite all the research that was done, it's believed that the ancient Egyptian garden is the first one of its kind to be recreated. So that's quite special for us. Hamilton Gardens is also home to Te Parapara, which is the only traditional Māori garden in New Zealand. 
Um, as a region that we, you touched on before, Rosie, um, we've got quite a strong agricultural heritage here. And the outcome of that is we've got some great um, dairy products that come from that. So Duck Island ice cream, um, award-winning cheese like Maya. Um, we're really proud to call them home. We also have New Zealand's only um, organic commercial tea estate at Zeelong Tea Estate. Um, we also have some really iconic coffee roasters and brewers such as Good George, um, who started off as just a something that a couple of mates thought would be cool to do. Um, Hobbiton came along and said, hello, we would like to work with you. Um, and Good George had to beg, borrow and steal every keg that they could to meet their first order. And that's how they got their big break. So we're quite lucky that we've got some really local homegrown guys that are based here. Um, Next slide. We're also probably one of the largest berry growing regions in New Zealand. Um, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, any kind of berry berry that you can think of. Um, we probably grow it here and most farms offer pick your own experiences. So in the summertime, you can come along, pick as many strawberries or blueberries as you like. They get weighed and you pay for them and they're yours to do what with you like. Um, we also have a lot of foodie events in the region that celebrate our local produce. So farmers markets every week in both Hamilton and Cambridge. Um, Kafia Kai Festival out on the west coast um, really celebrates Kai Moana um, and their connection to the sea there. Um, and Gourmet in the Gardens happens every year where a bunch of food trucks arrive at Hamilton Gardens on a Sunday night during summer um, where you can enjoy some local food. Um, we're also home to lots of events here in the Waikato, um, both free and paid. So lots of international sport, cricket, rugby. Um, we're due to host the FIFA under 23 tournament next year. Um, as Rosie mentioned, we also have field days here, which is in summer this year for us. Um, and balloons over Waikato, which is our iconic hot air balloon event that happens every March. Uh, as a region that is um, quite large <laughs> and quite diverse, we have tons of nature experiences. So this particular um, image is from the West Coast out at Raglan, so kayaking in the harbour. Um, and then we have Sanctuary Mountain Mangatauteri, which is, um, has the largest, longest pest-proof fence in the world. Um, so it's a, the only ecological island on mainland New Zealand, um, which is home to lots of native wildlife, kiwi, kaka, tuatara. Um, they are currently going through the process of fundraising to build a fence so that we can have kakapo. Um, at this stage, there is no um, kakapo in the North Island. So if we manage to get, well, fundraise enough money to build a kakapo proof fence, <laughs> um, we will be able to get them here, which will be really exciting for us. The team at Sanctuary Mountain are also just wrapping up a program um, called Kiwis for Kiwi, where they released 500 kiwi onto the mountain over five years. Um, so that's a significant amount of kiwi for our um, breeding programs. And the hope is that um, in future, they'll be able to rehome some of those kiwi elsewhere. Uh, and on our west coast of Raglan, um, not only is it known for the longest left-hand surf break in the world, um, but it also has plenty of um, artisan producers. It is a hub for artists. There's a great collection out there, and I'm sure Jeremy can talk to that more. Um, but there's a variety of experiences out there as well. So surf lessons, sunset cruises, um, climbing up waterfalls, um, which you can also do at night. And there's also glow worms out there. So that's really exciting. Um, we also have tons of walking and cycling trails in our region. So we, um, our patch of the Waikato that I referred to in the map earlier is home to two of New Zealand's great rides, the Timber Trail and the Hauraki Rail Trail. Um, we also have trails like the Waikato, oh, oh, I've changed, the, <laughs> the um, Te Awa River Ride, 
um, which follows the river from Narawahia in the north down to Lake Karapiro in the south. We also have heaps of walking trails um, and waterfalls. So um, lots of summit climbs, gentle walks along the river, um, any kind of walk that you could hope for, we are home to that. Um, and we're also really family friendly when my slide changes. <laughs> so we have heaps of activities for families, children, young and old, indoor, outdoor, they could do all of the activities I've already talked about, but we also have things like Hamilton Zoo, we have um, Waikato Museum, which is not only a great showcase of um, local art, but also has dedicated um, children's exhibitions. We have alpaca farms and um, bowling. And I think that's pretty much, I've summed up the region in a nutshell really quickly. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you, Amber. I'm sorry the remote control didn't work perfectly well. Fingers crossed we can get it working for Jeremy. Um, but hopefully that's given you all a good flavour of some of the um, awesome fun things there are to do in the Waikato region. So now it's my pleasure to hand you over to Jeremy, who's the CEO of Creative Waikato, to talk more about the creative scene in our region. And I'll hand over control. Maybe try using um, a keyboard if you've got that, Jeremy. It seems like it doesn't like the mouse. But fingers crossed a keyboard will work. We'll give it a try. Kia ora koutou, uh, ko Jeremy Mao, tōku ingoa, uh, i whānau mai ahau i kiri kiri rō. Um, as mentioned, I'm the CEO of Creative Waikato. So Creative Waikato is a charitable organisation that works as a regional capability builder in the arts, uh, culture and creative sector of the Waikato region, um, covering across the, the similar 10 districts to Te Waka. Um, We've really kind of established our role as a, um, a, a kind of thought leader and system connector and um, strategic advisor, um, working with artists and community organizations throughout the whole ecosystem of the Waikato region, from flax roots community activity through to commercial creative activity that um, exists within our region and extends out to kind of national and international acclaim. Um, as a regional arts development agency, we serve communities through the provision of capability and capacity building services to strategically enhance and strengthen the value and impact of the arts, culture and creativity in our region. We support and develop and champion Waikato arts by understanding the unique needs of our bold and ambitious creative sector and seek to collaborate with national and regional organisations, as well as with individuals, councils and communities to drive positive change, opportunity and well-being through diverse and transformative creative activity. And that's very much what's at the kind of heart of the arts and culture in the Waikato. Um, it has a really strong connection to Te Ao Māori and really kind of interweaves how um, art becomes a part of everyday life through kind of celebration, through kind of moments of understanding, through moments of connection. Oh, hopefully it's going to change for me. Oh, there we go. Um, our creative scene is really diverse. Um, it happens in streets, it happens in theatres, it happens in galleries. We have performers who um, work across sector. We have a really great little touring community that happens throughout the thing. We have a really strong visual arts community and that happens both within Hamilton City and also more broadly. Um, as Amber mentioned, there's a really strong community of visual artists in Raglan um, based around um, some gallery spaces there out at the Wharf and the Old School Arts Centre, as well as um, an arts studio tour that happens there once a year. We also have a really strong um, visual arts community largely centered around ceramics in the Coromandel uh, with Driving Creek pot Pottery and the work that uh, Barry Brickle started. Um, but throughout the region, we see a range of different things. We see a number of events that bring communities together. We see pathways for young people to have experiences performing on stages. We have a range of different uh, performing arts venues, both small venues that exist in local small communities and really enable the kind of creative well-being that occurs through being part of performances, as well as through to the kind of broader performing arts ecosystem that we have in based in Kirikiriroa that sees a kind of network of performing venues from community activity at Riverley Theatre to um, 
the Gallagher Academy of Performing Arts at the University of Waikato, to the Meteor Theatre, to Clarence Street Theatre, and also to the new uh, Waikato Regional Theatre that will be built. But we also th see activities like this one being the Sunset Symphony at the Hamilton Gardens Arts Festival. Um, our connection to uh, Te Ao Māori is expressed through a really strong connection to Tango Pūro, to Kapahaka, um, to weaving raranga um, and other cult and carving art forms and we can see that through our public art we can see that in our community venues and we can see that in the, the performances that take place and as well as that being a really fundamental tool for the well-being of our region it's also some really um, powerful reclaiming of, of cultural narrative that exists with groups like a homanu collective which is a um, a collective of Tangapur or specialists who have been doing a lot to kind of uh, grow that art form both regionally and nationally and internationally. We have a really strong music scene that has seen performers uh, creating a range of original work, including performers such as Kimbra who have gone on to um, win multiple Grammys. And uh, we've had groups like Crowded House come from here, the Datsuns, the Top Twins. So there's a really strong um, legacy of of really powerful performers and as well as a really kind of strong pathway for young people um, with groups like the Rahui project um, with groups like um, Star Jam with um, pathways for kind of families to embed arts practices both in the school lives and also outside of schools. Um, we see some really um, transformative and accessible arts making. So this is a group called Equal Voices Arts, which is New Zealand's only deaf-led um, performing arts company. And so it's very much looking at the accessibility and innovation around how do we communicate and tell stories through shared language. Um, again, we can see some really powerful connections to Kapahaka with um, the work that's going on with Waikato Tainui and really quirky arts activities. So we have a really strong tradition of um, street theater of street performances with groups like um, Free Lunch, which is a, a street theater, professional street theater group that's been running for about 26 years in the region, as well as the work that's been done by groups like this, which is the um, Big Muffin Serious Ensemble, which is a ukulele ensemble that has toured internationally and, and works at, in ukulele festivals and just brings a really, really kind of fun, irreverent energy to community festivals around the region. Um, our local gallery spaces are continue, continuing to find new ways to express and this image is part of a Kotahitanga collection which commissioned a range of artists to respond to um, growing instances of racism to use art as a tool for powerful kind of social change to inspire communication and to tell different stories of how we connect with one another. We have youth development programs and these are often sponsored by um, by investors, by councils, by governments to really kind of build that pathway for people. And we see some more kind of pathways for connections into cross-disciplinary art forms with storytelling, with live drawing, live music, and big kind of bold performance works that travel across our region. Um, I'm just going to cycle through a couple more. Um, here we go. We have the Boone Street Art Festival. This is another iconic part of the Waikato art scene, which has been going for six years and has commissioned over 40 murals in and around Hamilton. Um, this is also paired with the work of the Mesh, Mesh Sculpture Trust, which have been um, they put up four large scale public artworks and are working on their fifth one, as well as some smaller scale work. Um, we also see some really interesting work that pairs technology with um, art and installation. Um, so this is um, part of a program that was part of an innovating streets work, which was looking at pedestrianizing areas through placemaking and space making, utilizing art to do that, but also paired with the Te Ruru Light Festival, which is looking at um, really interesting expressions of um, artistic understanding through technology. And we can see that there's more work happening here with the programs like Boon After Dark. Um, oh, my screen is now not, there we go. Um, we have some really strong uh, dancers, musical theater is really big in the, in the region, um, as, as well as kind of street, oh, my the screen is jumping ahead of me. <laughs> um, so 
really, really what we see is a really collaborative network of artists and performers who are looking to embed arts, culture and creativity across all ecosystems so that it's not just a thing that sits on the side, but it's connected with our health and wellness, it's connected with our education, it's con connected with our social cohesion, it's connected with our civic infrastructure, and it becomes part of the way that we tell our stories and really identify the Waikato as being the place that it is. Um, and we see really kind of powerful pathways for having arts, culture and creativity playing a vital role in thriving society and looking at how it contributes to how we grow, how we reach understanding, how we celebrate the places that we live, and how we can utilize arts, culture, and creativity to think about the world in its current state and then reimagine the world as it could be. Um, I think eventually, this is going to let me go to the next slide. Here we go. And this is a video that uh, talks about the vibrant art scene of Kirikiridor. Kirikiriroa Hamilton is a fantastic place for the arts. We have so many incredible writers, artists, directors. There's heaps going on here and the community has been growing for a really long time. There is this deep uh, connection to the whenua that tangata whenua have here. So there is a very rich Māori presence. It is a vibrant city, it is growing. Some of the hidden gems in Kirikiriroa Hamilton are places like Rivoli Theatre, like Creative Waikato, like The Meteor, like Arts Post. Never Project Space in Frankton. A lot of really great stuff happening there, both in terms of visual art and performance. We've got some of the best street theatre in the country with free lunch. Boone Festival, check out the streets, go for a wander all around the city. Clarence Street is one of the key theatres in Kirikiroa. There's always exciting shows going on over there. The Meteor Theatre is a space for the community to share creative experiences and we have so many unique arts experiences here. There are places like Navarra Lounge, which is a fantastic venue for bands. Features like the Misoverse, the immersive walkthrough art space. Kirikiroa is bomb. The city is bomb. And I think I'll probably cry if I ever have to leave. We're different. 100% different to everyone else. I'm really excited about what I see happening in the creative scene here and I really look forward to seeing what the next generation does. Come to Hamilton, come to Kirikiriroa and experience the arts right here. Come to Kirikiriroa. Things grow here, especially the arts. Awesome, that's all from me. Wonderful, thank you, Jeremy. And the technology largely worked, so I'll take it. Um, now, question is, do we have, um, do we have Cheryl on the call? Has she joined us now? Yes, Cheryl's just looking for the ID, but if she went into the uh, meeting invite, she'd find it. Um, so until Cheryl gets here, I'll just give a wrap up. That was amazing team is what I want to say. Pretty cool. Um, some things uh, what I really noticed because I went to Waikato University in the early 90s. And so it's really good to see that the balloon festival is still happening since so like 30 years ago, right? Um, and I love it now that uh, the city is starting to embrace the river and actually utilize the river face. I think that's really cool. I love seeing that. And I really enjoyed the timber trail. I've done that a few times. I think that's pretty cool. And one thing I really love, uh, Rosie, that you brought up is the difference actually on the east coast of New Zealand, we have white sand and on the actual west coast of New Zealand, we have black sand. And that's actually something that people don't actually realize either. Um, and that uh, Waikato University, when I was there, that was when we had our first um, computer lab. So John Hawker, who was um, an instructor at the time, he was the one that brought um, the email and the first uh, link of having um, internet to New Zealand, and that was through Waikato University. Yes, the very first internet connection yep. was in, yep. in the mighty Waikato at the university. Yep. Yep, exactly. And so that was pretty cool. And um, what I love also that you've brought up is um, that each university has now specialised in technology in a certain area, which I think is pretty cool of New Zealand because we're such a small market. And I love it how we've done that. Rather than competing, we've sort of gone into it. So I, I really like it how you've gone to that AI. You've got the AI Institute and you're sort of nailing down in that and that you've got the new climate um, degree 
and also the um, security degree. Cyber security, yeah. Yeah, I think that's amazing. So now um, Cheryl has just jumped in, so we'll just get, let her have time to catch her breath, and then we will jump into Cheryl. She's going to talk to us about what it's like to be a fellow and why she chose um, Raglan to live in as a, as a place. And um, Cheryl, if, have you managed to, are you there ready to roll whenever you are? Yes, I am. Kia ora. Right. Kia ora, Michelle. Kia ora, Cheryl. Thank you for joining us. Over to you to talk a bit about your experience as a fellow in the region. Ah, oh, kia ora. Um, uh, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, so I'm Cheryl Reynolds. I'm an uh, Edmund Hillary Fellow from uh, Piri Piri. Um, that's cohort two. Um, and I've been living in the Waikato region, the mighty Waikato, for the almost 20 years now. Um, I had uh, arrived from London. Um, I'd been running a, a creative tech company in London um, up until uh, 2021. And when 9-11 happened, um, we'd had a, a team of um, six beautiful people that um, uh, we were just finishing off a big project with the World Trade Center. Um, and they were there when the planes went in and that changed my life. And um, um, and it, by the end of 2001, I had uh, arrived in Aotearoa, you know, looking to find myself after that experience. Um, and I arrived uh, to stay with a friend for a, a few weeks and I ended up with an open ticket staying nine months and, and I fell in love with Aotearoa. And it's a beautiful country and, and incredible people. Um, and so after I'd left Aotearoa, I um, ended up back in London eventually. And um, I'd always wondered if I, I could live in, in Aotearoa, New Zealand. And uh, within six months, I had secured a, an eight month contract to start up an academic research centre in the Waikato in Hamilton, Kirikiriroa. And, um, and it was an eight month contract and I arrived and I settled quite quickly in uh, Whangaroa, Raglan. Uh, where I live now uh, with my beautiful partner um, and um, so I've been here for uh, since 2003 and it's been a wonderful journey it's been great um, for me I um, have worked uh, in the city um, I uh, ran the academic research center which spun out a business incubator called Soda um, and that was a, a, a wonderful uh, experience to be able to to start that up and and to grow that uh, in in the city. Um, and uh, my experience of of living and working here is is one of it's just um, everything's so easy. You no, know, you know, mayors by name and MPs by name and um, everyone's two degrees of separation, if not one and a half. And um, it's, a, it's, it's a, a, a great place to live and work. Um, I, I went on to start up a philanthropic foundation. So starting things is, is good and easy and building um, organizations is, 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 is so possible because people are willing to help you and, um, and get behind you. And people are kind here. People are good people. Um, so, you know, they genuinely want to, to help and, and, and help you achieve what you're wanting to and likewise you know it becomes reciprocal so you want to help other people um so a beautiful community to work in um i live in uh Whangaroa raglan as i mentioned and uh, that's a small uh, community of three and a half thousand on the west coast of the north island um and it's just 40 minutes drive from Kirikiriroa, Hamilton, and um, it's a, a, a great place with beautiful people. Um, it's a surf, surf beach and beautiful mountains, lifestyle is great, great big deep harbour. Many people um, like us, like us fellows that are, are living there, um, lots of surfers and creatives and entrepreneurs and techies, a really good Māori community, sort of significant population that's very integrated, um, or we, we're integrated with um, Tangata Whenua, um, and they welcome us. Um, and, um, and yeah, so, so great lifestyle um, at, uh, in, in Raglan, um, which is growing and uh, a great place to, to live and work. Um, I think I've probably covered it. Um, do you have any questions? I think that's great. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, really appreciate you taking the time. I know you squeezed us in between various meetings. 
um, if there are any questions from the room. Otherwise, um, I think mainly people uh, will be watching the recording of this later. Um, sure. yeah, if there are any questions, we'll grab those. Otherwise, we might carry on. So thank you, Cheryl. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Right, so just before I, I kind of close off the, the formal presentation, um, and thank you for those of you who are attending and those who are watching the recording, um, really appreciate the time that you're taking to learn about the Waikato region and the great opportunities and lifestyle we have to offer. And we're really excited about what the Edmund Hillary Fellowship has to offer and we'd love to welcome you into our region. Um, I wanted to leave you with some thoughts from the Tiwaka team on some of the, the key areas where we can see change makers like the Edmund Hillary Fellows being able to add really significant value in the Waikato region. You know, we've got really emerging growth sectors like aquaculture and future foods that need expert skills. We need expertise and innovative approaches to sustainability, decarbonisation and climate adaptation. We have manufacturers that will need expertise to support them in adopting Industry 4.0 technologies. We want to think differently about how we can generate value from waste and transition to alternative fuels, especially for our freight sector. We need innovative green tech, agri tech and biotech businesses to help us reduce our regional emission profile and remain competitive on the world stage. We need more innovation and more startups like everywhere. We need more renewable energy. We need visitors and talent from around the world to come to us. And we need to get better at how we commercialize all the research that we are producing. Um, and we need our businesses and educators and researchers to collaborate more together. So there's lots of challenges and opportunities there. If those sound exciting to you, we'd really love to see you in our region and helping us to drive the change that we need to grow into the future. So thank you again for your time. Namahi nui kia koutou. Um, now I'm happy to open up uh, for questions. Thank you again. Thank you, Rosie. Um, Rosalie's got a question that she'll read out. I'm just gonna uh, just stop you sharing there so that we can right, see your sweet. beautiful faces. Rosalie, thank you've you. got a good question. Thank you. And listen, that was really great. I loved the exposition. Um, that you've done. So thank you so much. Just my question was that given the, the region's dependency on both agriculture and particularly dairying, what's occurring in the regenerative agriculture space and actually beginning to plan for the shift away from dependence on commodities? I think it's fair to say we're still quite early on that journey. Um, I think in some ways, COVID hasn't been helpful for us on that journey in the sense that bunkering down and getting on with the way that we have done things and with really high dairy prices, it's kind of supported just keep calm and carry on. Um, but there is also obviously a recognition with the work that's gone into Hiwaka Ekanoa and some of those other initiatives that there do need to be changes to the practices. But I think I, I would say we are early on that journey. Um, but there's definitely interest. Um, it's just figuring out how do we do that in a way that is sustainable for them as, as industries and businesses to be able to make that transition. I don't know if others on the on the call have a perspective on that, but that would be be my view on it. Thank you. That makes perfect sense. Todd, do you have anything you want to reflect on or, or give back to the team? Yeah, I, I think it was a you know, multi-dimensional overview that uh, so many different areas that, you know, resonate. So I'm, I'm just really excited uh, that that's uh, my friend from Japan's home base where she has a room for me uh, as soon as I get there. And uh, she's already been laying a lot of the groundwork uh, with people to meet and experiences to have. So, uh, uh, and great hearing your perspective as well, Cheryl. So thanks for sharing that. I can't wait to visit in August. Wonderful. I hope the weather will be okay. August is... <laughs> Is somewhat wet here in the Waikato, but um, we'll do our best to put on some good weather for you. Yeah, actually, my wife chose she's going to join me coming back in January through March. Uh, she, she did the research, <laughs> um, but it gets me two trips, so I'm happy as well. Um, and then there's a lot to connect with the Future Food Network, which I'm working with on the regenerative agriculture, about to head to their uh their mothership of, of regenerative villages. So I think there'll be a lot of good cross fertilization uh, with that. Wonderful. I think the other thing to add there, which I didn't 
just occurred to me as you were uh, with your question, Rosalie, and as you were speaking, Todd, um, there's also a real opportunity for the region around um, what's the word for it, but for the um, for there's a lot of Māori land that. Um, Oh, why can't I think of the word when it's uh, not super productive? Um, it's it's relatively poor quality land, it's marginal land, um, but there's obviously a significant amount of it in our region, and we the region is really looking for opportunities for how to make best productive use of that land and are there opportunities in regenerative agriculture or different forms of food production or different forms of agriculture to make better use of that marginal land and um, to continue creating creating wealth in the Māori economy as well. <coughs> That's great to hear. There's uh, another, uh, the blue economy is another portfolio of solutions around turning marginal land into abundant land and including uh, abundant energy, clean water, organic agriculture. So there, there are a bunch of examples that already have traction in different parts of the world that we can look to and sort of help them choose which ones seem most relevant. I think that's exactly what people are looking for in the region is to learn from what's worked elsewhere and overseas. Um, they're not necessarily wanting to be the, the guinea pigs and, and be the first to try something. Um, they've had to fight really hard to get the assets and, and that they have. So they're wanting to be sensible in the investments that they're making. So having that international expertise from fellows like yourselves to be able to bring that experience into our region and share that knowledge would be greatly welcomed. Nice, that's good. Thank you for putting that there. I'm just going to uh, finish with the recording, but I just want you all to stay there. So thank you, Rosie. Thank you, team. Thank you for an amazing presentation. It has been lovely to see it today and experience and see the growth since I was there 30 years ago. And I look forward to coming back and being a tourist in March at my cousin's wedding. So it's going to be great to see all the new things. And now I know where to go and what to do. So uh, kai kite, team, and look forward to the next session.